Hey, what's up guys? My name is Echerno and welcome to the 10th Sparky Devlog. So 10 Devlogs, that's a nice number to have here. And we've actually achieved a lot since the first Devlog. If you guys go back and take a look at what Sparky was like at Devlog number one, you'll see that a lot has changed, right? The biggest thing that has changed is that Sparky now supports both DirectX and OpenGL. Uh, but we've also come just miles, miles ahead uh, where we were last time with the 3D renderer and we've, we've, we've just done so much work. So it's actually quite, it's actually quite, quite scary almost to look back and be like, whoa, like the engine back then was barely anything. Right. And now it's actually, um, now it's actually something, something, something's there, right? It has some weight to it. Now, if I were to have to rewrite this again, I would be very, very annoyed because this is a lot of work. It's been, it's been about a year in fact, since Sparky began. So it's quite, quite a nice, um, it's, it's coming along quite well. Uh, this devlog isn't really going to be about too much because what I've been doing over the past week is I've been preparing for a release. Okay. Now, for those of you who have been following Sparky, you know that, um, when I kind of work on Sparky and I'm kind of right in the middle of a development cycle, I don't commit to GitHub. I just commit to like a local kind of versioner. Um, Versioner is another version control system, by the way, that you can check out. There'll be a link in the description below. But I, I kind of keep a Versioner um, repository and I use that all the time to kind of transfer files between two computers. And mainly all of my kind of nightly development, right, where the whole thing is completely broken, um, that happens on that Versioner repository. And so you don't see that on GitHub, right? And if you guys do want access to that version of repository, because it's usually just something that I use, then you can actually do that by pledging $5 or more, or more per month on Patreon. And again, the link to that is in the description. But once a month or so, I want to start doing releases on GitHub, which is when I kind of synchronize this, uh, this kind of working copy and all of my local changes that I've done uh, in version and, and I actually push that onto the public GitHub. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, of course, Sparky is on GitHub. If you just go to github.com forward slash the channel forward slash Sparky, the link is in the description below, then you will, uh, you'll see this. Now, this is quite old. If you look at this, I think it's about two months. The last commit was in January. Wow. It's been more than two months, in fact. So it's been a really long time since the last commit. And again, if you were to view uh, the engine as it was kind of back then, my goodness, there are, there are a lot of... Oh, just so much work has happened. In fact, I challenge you guys to go and just download the engine and take a look at what it is now, because um, when I do push the code, it'll be, it's basically be a completely different engine. It's just crazy to think how much work has gone into this. Um, but anyway, I will kind of synchronize that up here. So that's the idea. There's going to be a release in March. I promised you guys I would make March and it turns out I'm actually aiming for the 31st, which is on Thursday. So the very last day of March, is when this should be uploaded to GitHub, okay? Now, in order to prepare for this release, I've been doing a few things. So if we just demo the game right now, I'll show you guys kind of what I've been working on and my checklist of what I need to do before I'm going to push it. Um, and the, the main thing here, if we take a look at this real quick, so we've got, this is running uh, just DirectX right now. Um, as you can see there, if I just kind of uh, switch the camera here. So this is looking pretty good. We have physically based rendering here. If we go to sandbox and we just enable the uh, test 2D, which is, so we'll, we're pushing that layer on top of the 3D layer. You should be able to see both the 2D layer and the 3D layer here. We can just verify that both 2D and 3D is working correctly. And I actually haven't tested this. So I hope it is, should be. Yep, there we go, right? And we've still got our mask, as you can see on the, uh, thing and a few kind of other uh, debug st uh, statistics that have come up that, that have come up with the layer. Uh, if you take a look at um, the, I wonder why we're not hitting VSync here. But anyway, uh, if you take a look at uh, this thing, you'll find, let me just show off the 2D layer real quick because it is in the way. Um, <clears throat> if you take a look at the top right corner, which is kind of our debug layer stuff, you'll see a few things, uh, namely when this launches, Okay, namely you'll see, uh, of course, the memory usage, which if you actually take a look at it, you'll see that it's not growing. So I've fixed that memory leak. Um, uh, and uh, you'll see the milliseconds per frame, because of course you can see that we are at VSync, uh, which is 60 FPS, but this milliseconds per frame is actually how long it takes to draw everything, not including the actual swapping the buffers. Okay, because of course that will include VSync and waiting for VSync. So, um, 
And that's why we can't include that. But yeah, so basically all the actual drawing to the buffers that DirectX will do and all that, all the draw calls, everything from start to finish of a frame is what this milliseconds display here shows. So you can really see how fast it is, um, which is not very fast at all. Now, in fact, I think that if I launch OpenGL now, you'll see that it's around. In fact, let's do that. Let's quickly switch this to OpenGL. Um, there are some things that I need to fix up with the OpenGL PBR shader as well. The DirectX one is generally a lot better at the moment, I think. This won't even work. <laughs> That's great. Why, why are you sad? Um, I must have been right in the middle of something. Let's take a look at this. It's not happy with the radiance. Why is it not happy with the radiance? I wonder why. What was the error message? This is fun. I'm going to debug this right in front of you guys. Has no return statement. Unexpected reserved word return. What? This is correct though. Oh, I've got the letter A here. Really? Is that, was that the reason for the error? I think so. All right, that's fantastic. Well, that was easy. Um, anyway, if I take a look at this, uh, it looks a little bit different, it looks a bit darker, and we have this uh, black kind of spot here in the middle of everything that you'll notice. And I'm pretty sure that's because of the texture wrap mode. Um, yeah, I think it's set to wrap and it should be clamp. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's the reason because this happened in DirectX as well, but I fixed that by setting the a sampler to be um, well, an isotropic, but that doesn't really matter. But clamp instead of wrapping, uh, I don't know. I, I need to probably do that for OpenGL. I think I did that on OpenGL, it didn't work properly. But anyway, you can see that the OpenGL implementation roughly works. Look at the frame time. That is so fast. DirectX will be that in maybe even a bit faster. The reason it's about seven to eight milliseconds right now on DirectX is because I put in the base implementation of DirectX, right? There are so many optimizations I could do. The worst thing that I'm doing in DirectX right now is I'm actually, every for every single draw call that I'm doing, I'm actually calling, um, you know, like set VS user uniform buffer, which in the shader actually maps the resource you never want to, you want to do this as 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 rarely as possible because this actually takes up a sizable chunk of time like you could measure the amount of time that this takes up um, and I, I'll do some I might I'm not going to do some profiling in front of you guys now but trust me this is terrible so ideally what would happen is materials would actually have um, you know these buffers in them right so basically materials actually maintain DirectX constant buffers. Uh, and then what happens is that rather than mapping this every time, rather than the shader having one constant buffer or however many constant buffers you have in your shader in the actual shader class and having to map and unmap that all the time, what you do is you kind of delegate that off to the material and then the material just sets certain buffers as active in certain slots, right? Kind of like what we have with, um, with uh, I imagine this is somewhere here. Anyway, when we actually uh, assign the buffer, I actually just don't even know where that is. But anyway, well, I guess they're, they're okay over here, right? <clears throat> so this is where we set all of our constant buffers, right? You only kind of do that. You only switch. You, you only switch. You, you switch out the constant buffers rather than switching out their data. That is probably the primary reason why this is so slow. Okay. Um, so once I fix that, it'll definitely be a lot faster. But anyway, so DirectX by no means is optimal whatsoever. In fact, I think OpenGL is not really optimal. OpenGL though is very close to being optimal compared to DirectX because OpenGL of course is a thing that I've been working on for about a year. So <laughs> that implementation is rather good and you can see how fast it is, which is pretty awesome. Uh, indeed, it's very, very fast. Um, less than a millisecond per frame at times, which is fantastic for a PBR shader. I mean, I know, I know that we're not really doing too much work. Um, there's really not not like there's probably one two three and there's how many of them ten I think one two three four five yep ten so there's 23 draw calls happening um, as far as the the base scene goes I guess the skybox is another draw call and uh, all the text I'm not counting so there there are and that's not using the PBR shader anyway so there are 23 draw calls with the PBR shader they're really not that big though um, but but you can see that it's, it's running very, very quickly. So I'd love to create some nice scenes for this. Maybe you guys can actually do that. Um, and I'll definitely start involving you guys a lot more because 
uh, because of a few things that are gonna happen that I'm gonna show you in a minute. Okay, first thing is though, you really need to be following the Sparky Trello, right? There's a link in the description, bit.ly uh, forward slash Sparky Trello. This is like a, this is like a kind of a roadmap-ish, it's more of like a task kind of handler, right? It's kind of like Jira. I'm using it kind of like Jira, if you guys have heard of that, that's basically like an issue tracker. I'm kind of using it a little bit like that because it's free. Um, to have open up like this, to like opened up like this to the public. But basically this is both a list of things that I'm currently working on, a list of things that are planned and stuff like releases up here has a checklist, which I, when I'm working, I have this open and I check stuff off as soon as I do it, which has a list of all the stuff that I need to do before I can basically ship this version of Sparky, right? So we have, you can see how much I've done. The big thing again that I did was the forward render memory leak, which was tied in with convert forward renderer to use system uniforms. So the actual forward renderer now, as you'll see, um, has been expanded quite a bit. And there is, there, are, there is a lot of kind of stuff going on here. So when we actually, well, there's a begin scene now and all that does is mem copies, no allocations whatsoever, right? There is still the, um, the submission here, which does push this into a vector and that, that does cause allocations, unfortunately, because the standard vector class is not very well written for video games. But anyway, um, we'll uh, we'll definitely uh, we'll definitely switch that out event sometime in the future to use our own data structure that doesn't allocate like crazy. Um, but you can see that this is this has been switched out quite a bit now. Um, <laughs> this is funny as well. One of the things that I haven't done though is material render flags. So, for example, should these uh, should the material be rendered? with depth testing on or depth testing off, right? What blend mode should the material be rendered with? All of that kind of stuff is what a material render flag is, right? It's basically a flag that you have in the material which tells the renderer how to render it. Now, we don't have that, which is why you see this comedy here, where it says, if I equals zero, disable depth testing, otherwise enable it, right? And that is, of course, for the skybox. So you'll notice that the skybox, uh, which is what we have right over here, is the very, very first th thing we add to the scene. So it is it is I equals zero, um, and it is rendered with depth testing off. So stuff like this is exactly why materials need to have render flags, because otherwise, yeah, there's like, we should just be able to be like, hey, skybox material, render with depth testing off, and of course it should uh, do that automatically. But same, same thing applies to stuff like blend modes though, definitely. Um, yeah, so that's another big thing that I have to do. Uh, everything else, like there's a bit of, there's a few, there's a few bugs here and there. I'm not really too, like, like bug bugs. Like there are some bugs that I really like. Fix to fix texture 2D mipmap generation directx. That stuff is kind of being shifted off to the end of the list. Might not even make the release. But all this easy stuff, like material render flags, needs to get out. That's probably the only big feature. The rest is just you know tidying stuff up, like fixing some compiler warnings, reorganizing the filters in Visual Studio, removing Chernocraft, because that, well, first of all, doesn't work and B, should not be in the solution. Um, and then, uh, uh, I, yeah, remove old OpenGL specific files. So we used to have this like SP OpenGL, like buffer and, uh, in fact, some of these don't even exist. This, I think that actually might still be used, but like all this stuff, uh, where we have uh, these, they're not being used anymore. They were used back when my idea for having two APIs would be this low level, which of course is a terrible idea. And I don't know why I even consider that. And then like this kind of stuff, just removing all this, all this stuff. So there's, that's really all that I have to do. And then, you, then it'll be up on GitHub and you guys will be able to play with it. And I'll definitely do a video when that happens because that's gonna be a really big uh, occasion. And that should be uh, in a couple of days here, in like three days. So anyway, that's pretty much gonna wrap up this video. Um, I'm not going to talk about too, too, like, I'm not going to talk too much about what's going to happen next and what's going to happen in April as far as Sparky goes, because I really want to involve you guys a lot more with that. So really when we come up to that, uh, and when you guys actually start using the engine, I'm going to do a few things. First of all, I'm going to start accepting pull requests. Okay. So if you want to contribute to Sparky, then I would absolutely love you guys to do that. Okay. So of course, right now, no point. This stuff is very out of date, very stale. But when this kind of gets synchronized, more or less, um, with uh, when when I upload this code to GitHub, uh, yeah, definitely pull requests, all that stuff. I'm going to start accepting them um, because the API is more or less becoming stable, or more stable at least than it was over the last year. Um, I'm also going to probably start up a cool series 
maybe, I am not 100% sure if the engine is really that ready yet, but where I actually try to make a game, because of course, one of the most important things with a game engine is that it's easy to make games with, and I have no, I have no idea if Sparky is like that until I actually start making a game. And of course, if you guys want to start making your own games with Sparky just, just to play around with, of course, I wouldn't recommend it for anything serious because it's not ready yet. But uh, all of that stuff, then that, that's another series that I'd love to, love to start up. But anyway, so it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be a nice kind of community thing that we're gonna start up here uh, over the next month, which should be a lot of fun. And um, yeah, and we'll probably start working on some tools as well. I really want to make a level editor because I'm getting a little bit annoyed by having to uh, you know set up massive kind of um, massive scenes here and all that stuff, and just that's getting a little bit annoying and it should be, uh, it shouldn't be too difficult to set up a little level editor. We'll need to have a serialization. Um, we'll need to write some kind of serialization library first as well, which is why it is on the Trello as, <laughs> as critical <laughs> because, uh, this is really, really, um, going to come up soon. And then of course, when we do do that, we'll have to make it, we'll have to finish that CLI generator as well. This is being moved to probably critical as well because um, we need to be able to generate uh, CLI code so that we can actually, because the level editor that we'll make will be in C-sharp using WPF. This is gonna be Windows only, unfortunately for all of you uh, Linux people and Mac people who wanna use Sparky, it, the runtime will support Linux and Mac, but not the tools. I'm not gonna support that just because, I mean, I'm one person and there's, there's no way I'm gonna support three platforms, especially if I never ever plan on actually making games on any other platform other than Windows. So of course, this is a, this is a public repository on GitHub, so feel free to, you know, port this to Linux, do whatever you want. In fact, if we could start getting people actually testing this Sparky code on Linux and Mac, that would be fantastic. Anyway, I'll give you guys the details once that begins, but it should be a lot of fun. And uh, if you did enjoy the video, please hit the like button if you want to support the development of Sparky. Patreon is the best place to do that. You can become a patron and receive code more frequently and not have to wait for all these GitHub releases. Um, but anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, like button is of course below. If you didn't like the video, feel free to hit the dislike button and leave a comment saying why. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.